Yeah, you have time to do it. You have time. You have time. Um, about a couple of minutes. Four or five minutes. Um, I'll let you know when to start.
good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, thank you so much for being here today on uh, this lovely uh, morning, lovely Sunday morning, and you're here to encounter God. And it's no small feat, and it's not to be trifled with, because when you encounter God, and the scriptures bear this out, you are changed. You don't go out the way you came in, right? And that's one of our kind of subtle goals of uh, worship together is that we don't go out the same way we came in. We, we're somehow changed through the music, through the readings, through the prayers. Somehow we are transformed into being more like, you know, beacons of light for God in the world. And I hope that happens to you today. I hope that you are somehow challenged or comforted in the way that you need so that you're able to go out and do the work that God has given you to do in the world. We have our bell choir here today to uh, lead us through some of the music. And we have you to sing. So I'm glad that you're here. Uh, just want to say a few things. A, we do have a nursery downstairs. So if you or your spouse or children need to go into the nursery, you just go right through these doors, go right down there, and they'll take care of you. Uh, or see one of the ushers for more assistance. But um, you don't have to use it. You know, husbands are welcome to be in church. It's fine. But, um, but if you do want to use it, it's right down there, all right? So please make use of that if you'd like. The other thing to say is that today we have some visitors from Anne Arundel County Police uh, Office. That's, uh, it's because we had a guest at Winter Relief who last night was exhibiting some signs of, um, of, of what did I say, unrest. Um, that, you know, wasn't well. And so we didn't have the county response team's phone number on hand, so they called the police instead. We're very, very lucky in Anne Arundel County to have such a fine police force. But we're also very, very lucky to have probably one of the finest crisis response teams in the country, here, right here in Anne Arundel County. So um, they may be called in, but just know there's nothing to, uh, nothing to be concerned about. Everything's being taken care of, and we'll get on with worship right now. So as you are able, please stand for our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, kingdom, now and forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Hear what the Lord says. This is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. Oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me, for I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, and Balaam, son of Bor. Answer him, what happened to Shittim, to Gilgal? that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams and tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read the gradually, responsibly, by half verse. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. In his sight, the wicked is rejected. He has sworn to do no wrong. He does not give his money in hope of gain. 
Whoever does these things shall This is a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. There, where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of his age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, and we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were noble of birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce the nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Thank you, Jim. Please be seated. Good morning to everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, just get right into it. So this is the Beatitudes. This is Matthew's Beatitudes that we're hearing today. And I want you to think about your reality. All right? Um, there's a lot of talk right now on the street about um, the, 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 the top nominee for the best picture this year. Everything, everywhere, all, all at once. How many of you have seen it? More of you need to see it, all right, because it's unlike anything you've seen before. If you don't want movies about superheroes anymore and you don't want derivative crap, then go see good movies. <laughs> go see everything everywhere at once. Uh, Michelle, um, Yao, yes, Michelle Yao is, is fantastic, yes. Um, thank you, uh, Sarah, I appreciate that. So go see that movie because... Um, it opens up your eyes to what reality can be. And you might say, all right, what are you talking about? Beatitudes and reality. Okay, so here it is. Matthew's Jesus is like the new Moses. All right, we talked a couple weeks about, ago about Matthew being the book that we're going to read this year. All right, so first, first of all, it's the longest gospel. But more importantly, this is called the Jewish gospel because Matthew's audience are primarily Jewish people. So what Matthew wants to do is portray Jesus in such a way that he is like the new Moses. So, the first part of the story today, what does Jesus do? He goes up on a mountain. Who else went up on a mountain? Moses. Went up on Mount Sinai, got the law, right? Came down, they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want that reality. All right? They wanted the golden calf. They wanted a God they could control instead of the uncontrollable God of Moses. So Moses went up and got two new tablets. All right? Jesus gives them a new reality today in the Beatitudes. It's not uncommon to have language like this. And so we all know it um, pretty well. We know the blessed are, the blessed are, the... And we know it from the life of Brian. I know that that's one of your favorite movies, everyone. But we know it from blessed are the peacemakers. No, blessed are the cheesemakers, he said. Um, we can imagine everyone you know, gathered around to hear this story, and the disciples are in the front row, and they still don't get it. So don't feel bad if this is a little difficult to understand, all right? But this is a part of Matthew, beginning at the fifth chapter and going on to about the ninth chapter, where Jesus is claiming his authority as the Messiah, you know, he's claiming his authority as the leader of the people, as the chosen one, the one who was anointed to bring Israel out of slavery, all right? And, and we see that in metaphorical ways, but this is his authority. He's saying this. 
And what we have, how many of you took EFM, Education for Ministry? Okay, you'll understand this. Eschatological reading. Okay, eschatological simply means the end times. All right? We hear in the Beatitudes an eschatological reading of reality. It is not the way things are now, but Jesus turns that on its head and says, this is the way things are in the kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, the word poor can mean a bunch of different things in the original, right? We take it to mean poor in finance, poor in economics, poor in possessions. But it can also mean poor in terms of ignorance about our own needs. Now, think about that. A lot of us are ignorant about what we need in life. We think we need this, but we really need that, right? Um, you know, we, we, we think we need one thing, but we pervert it and we get something else, right? We think we need titillation, so we look to something like online that's bad, when what we really need is love. But we pervert love in such a way that we look for something else, right? So what we're trying to say here is that the reality that Jesus presents is not our reality, but guess what? It is breaking into our reality. Especially the more we hear the stuff, like we hear the reading from Micah this morning, we hear that God is doing wonderful things. God is looking to heal the sick and give sight to the blind and clothe the naked. God is looking to do these things, but we're a part of that reality. And the more that we can bring that reality to bear in the present day through things like winter relief, through things like lighthouse shelter, through things like tutoring and, uh, and, and citizenship classes, the more we can do that stuff, the greater clarity we have around the reality of God's incoming kingdom. You know, I, I think it's really clear in these passages today, both in the gospel and in Paul's letter to the Corinthians and in the psalm, that there's a lot of work to be done around a lot of spectrums in our lives if we want God's kingdom to reign. If when we say the Lord's Prayer, God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven, if we really believe that, then we've got work to do, yeah? And I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you for doing a lot of that work already. From, from knitters knitting prayer shawls that we take to hospital beds and hospice beds. From people who volunteer for not only the lighthouse shelter, but my brother's pantry and do so much good work right here on the peninsula. The people who are working with our Truth, Reconciliation, and Reparations Task Force to build relationships with the African American community right here on the peninsula so that they don't lose their history. This is the kind of work that I think Jesus is pointing to, that I think Micah points to, that I think the psalm points to, about bringing in a better world. I mean, how do we change our reality? How do we start with it? We don't start just by getting on the bike. At least I don't. I haven't. I guess I should say that. haven't. We don't start by that. We start by writing down, I'm going to get on the bike. Yeah? We make a time for it. We say, Sunday at 1 o'clock after services, I'm going to get on the bike. Hold me to it. <laughs> Words come before actions. All right? So Patty's right in the sense that when she said a couple weeks ago that the Beatitudes don't talk about what to believe. They talk about what to do. But they talk about how to, how to be. Right? They talk about how to be, how to live your life in such a way that God's kingdom is just kind of like second hand, that this stuff is just second nature to us. We have become so, um, what do I want to say, complacent about corruption in our lives, in our systems, in our culture, in our politics, in our economics. We've become so complacent with corruption that when we hear things like is read in the Psalms, um, he does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. 
wow, we're shocked by language like that. And we say, how radical. It's not radical. It's the way life should be. We shouldn't gerrymander. We shouldn't give unfettered influence to corporations. It's not the way to build God's kingdom, right? And I, I, I don't want to think that I'm stepping on a third rail here, but when Isaiah writes about, you know, the vision on the holy mountain of God, it's, that, it's not that one plants and another one sows. It's not that one sows and another one reaps. No, the vision is that you build your house and you live in it. You don't gain off of other people's work. So these are biblical principles that I'm trying to teach. I know it's an Episcopal church, but bear with me. <laughs> this Bible stuff is pretty, pretty heavy. These Beatitudes should set us going forward because Jesus talks about how to be before he talks about what to do. And he's going to talk about what to do. The, the next thing he says after the Beatitudes are, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Again, this is who you are. If you're poor, you're blessed. You're okay. If you're mourning, you're okay. If you are thirsting for justice, for people who have been ground down by the system and oppressed by things that are way, way above our head, God sees you. And you are blessed. That's who you are. That's who we are as a people. We are blessed beyond measure. And when we start living into that reality, then God's kingdom isn't so far away. When we understand that God comes not just for the holy and not just for the rich and famous, but God comes for all of us Even those we look down upon. God comes for all of us. God is for all of us. All of us are blessed in one way, shape, or form. Why don't we see that? Why is that so hard to live with? So in the next chapters of Matthew that we're going to read probably through Easter, or really through Lent, I guess, um, I want you to listen for those things about how to act based on the knowledge and the reality that you are blessed. What do we do after knowing this? How do we behave? So the Beatitudes is really a reversal of reality. And imagine how God's kingdom can break into our lives, into our church, into our world, and into our souls. Amen. And now as we are able, please stand and we'll confess our faith using the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God, true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and accomplished fire. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of the land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rest Bless all those lives whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Joan, David, Kevin, Lincoln, and Rich. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that you will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all of your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, Help us to ask only what accords with your will. And those good things which we dare not and in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your grace. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Yeah. <laughs> Be seated. Please be seated. Thank you all very much for being here today, and uh, just a welcome to everyone who is visiting St. Margaret's Church. Maybe for the first time, maybe not for the first time, but maybe you haven't heard me say this before. But we're going to go into communion right now, and we want you to know today and every day that we consider this altar to be not so much St. Margaret's altar, not really an Episcopal altar, as much as it is God's table. Therefore, all of you, no matter what denomination you call your own, where you find yourself in your spiritual journey, your sexual orientation, gender identification, sports team affiliation, or political persuasion, you're all welcome to receive communion at this church. Just come forward and stretch out your hands and you'll be fed. If you'd rather not receive for whatever reason, simply cross your arms over your chest and we'll give you a blessing. Either way, we're thrilled that you're here and I especially want to send a very, very warm thank you to everyone who's been involved in Winter Relief. Give yourselves a round of applause for being such great hosts. Um, everything that I've heard this week has gone really, really well. Uh, we've heard from Anne Arundel House of Hope, Arundel House of Hope, and they've said that um, 
St. Margaret's is always the most organized, right? And um, that, that everything has just gone so smoothly. Thank you to the volunteers. Thank you if you've, if you've come and gotten laundry, if you've stayed overnight, if you've cooked a meal. Thank you so much because the guests appreciate it beyond measure and um, they just can't be grateful enough. So hopefully some of them will join us for the 11:15 service and they'll get to feel that welcome themselves. But I'm so proud of the welcome that you put on making people feel like this is their home. Um, it really means a lot to me. So thank you all very, very much for that. Um, the second thing that I want to say is at 1030 today, we're going to do a communion class right up here at the altar with me. Uh, it's prim primarily designed for the younger set, but if you want to talk about communion, um, you might learn something just by sitting in the pews and hearing us talk about community kids at kind of their level so that they can understand kind of what we do up here and most importantly, how to do it um, if they want to take part in the meal that we all take part in. So please make that if you can. Grab your coffee and then come on back 1030 o'clock. That's when it will start. All right. I just said 1030 o'clock. Wow. February 2nd. Thursday, as we said last week, it is the Feast of the Presentation, also known as Candlemas. It's a very special day in the church, and we are celebrating this year by having uh, sung Compline that night at 7.30 p.m., with, featuring not only our choir, but the choir of Christ Church Kent Island. We're going to be putting on... Come on in. Come on in. It's all right. Come on in. Yeah. So, um, Compline, sung Compline, 7.30 p.m., Thursday night. Please make it if you can. It's a lovely service. We'd love to see all of you here to welcome the singers from Christ Church Kent Island as well as our own choir. Come on in. You tired, Ollie? Ugh, it's exhausting. I hear you. Come on in, Brandon. All right. All right, here comes John, Penny, and Tilly, and there's Emily. All right? Like I said, everyone, communion class at 1030. If you want to learn about communion, which I know you do, show up. All right? All right, so finally, um, there's an a error in the announcements today. Unfortunately, coffee hour today will not be hosted by the altar guild. I know that breaks a lot of our hearts. We were here for that. But uh, that's next week. So you have to come back next week for that special coffee hour hosted by the Altar Guild. But there's coffee hours there. There is still coffee hours, it's not hosted by the Altar Guild, which I think takes a little bit of the shine off, <laughs> if I'm being honest, all right? <laughs> so seriously. All right, so just know that, that if you go over there, the Altar Guild is not hosting. Next week. All right, we're ready? You ready? You ready? Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings, and come into God's courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all of every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel and Leah, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to the table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, O God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship, from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not 
temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take these gifts in remembrance that Christ lived and died for us. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Lord God, the bright, bright splendor whom the nations seek. May we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the presence of your presence in your incarnate Son, who suffered, died, and buried, and who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light in the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah.